Hi everyone, I'm here today with Kate Holroyd. She's the founder of Strawberry Holidays, which is a mobile personal travel consultancy specialising in cruise and tour holidays. Hi Kate, thanks for joining me today. No worries, thanks for having me. So let's start off by um, telling us a bit about Strawberry Holidays and how it's different to any other travel agency. Well, Strawberry Holidays is a home working agency like a few um, others out there. Um, however, I do travel to clients' homes and we've met in pubs and cafes as well. I really do emphasise the mobile aspect normally, obviously. Um, at the moment, it's very much Zoom calls all the way. Um, but we specialise or I specialise in tours and cruises specifically for Australia, the US, Italy, Greece and Disney. Um, I'm a big, uh, I've got a big passion for Disney. Um, and um, when we create a bespoke itinerary, uh, we deliver that on a web page that people can either share or they can come back to, they can view it on any device. Um, so that works really nicely. And you adjust times to suit around clients, don't you? So it's weekends and evenings mainly for you, isn't it? It is, yes. Um, one of our conscious decisions in the beginning was not to have a shop because um, we didn't feel it was going to be worthwhile having a shop that was open you know, Monday to Friday, nine to five, when our ideal clients aren't available during that time. So yeah, I work um, evenings and weekends, which is fantastic because it works around the kids and my husband uh, really nicely. Great. And um, you use social media quite a bit. I notice you've got a great presence on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. How has social media helped you broaden your customer base? Oh, massively. I mean, especially during these times as well. So with Facebook, um, using the live video feature, I'm um, getting 300% more views and 45% more minutes being watched by doing daily Facebook lives. Um, with LinkedIn, um, I use LinkedIn a lot and there's um, little competition from other travel consultants on there. It's a perfect spot for my ideal clients. And I've got nearly 3,000 collection, uh, collections, connections. I mean, one of the great things about LinkedIn is, you know, you you can literally invite you know people to your network very very easily and attract people to you um, that way and then as you mentioned Instagram is definitely a growth area for me recently in the last sort of couple of months that's just through using a consistent look and feel and trying to get people um, a little bit more emotionally involved in the profile I mean it's grown by 17% um, in the last 30 days so um, I'm really really pleased with how Instagram is, is increasing and what kind of content are you posting on social media? Well, it varies depending on the platform, but ultimately I try and follow sort of four pillars of content. And this isn't my own device. Um, I learned it from Helen Pritchard, who is a LinkedIn uh, marketing sort of um, expert, if you will. She does this five day challenge. But the four pillars that I use are stories. So, um, you know, relating to people relating to clients um, or personal stories about myself and um, I use testimonials that's the second pillar I use um, call to action posts and um, whether that's you know appointments for in the after and um, after all uh, COVID-19 I've got a full diary and um, for the first week back if you will because I've invited people to kind of get on a VIP appointment list um, or um, and then the last one is video Video is a massive one and um, I really do think that you know getting your face out there is, is really important so yeah they're the four pillars I kind of use across the platforms but um, in different ways. Well oh, great yeah sounds like you've really really engaging with clients and trying out different methods and getting your name out there. Yeah, testing is a it's huge. You've got to test and learn all the time. So the last six weeks have been really influential to my marketing, really, because I've used this travel virtually campaign as like an umbrella, focusing on different destinations. But because I've been doing live videos every single day, I've done different times of day, um, and now I've got loads of stats on different times of day, days of the week. So I can really use that knowledge, um, you know, going forward. But yeah, definitely, testing should always be part of your uh, marketing. But it's been um, a really interesting six weeks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's important to keep growing, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, t tell me about your Holiday Companions Club initiative, because that's quite interesting and something different that you seem to be doing at the moment. 
Yeah, well, it's one. Of, it was one of those things that just came out of a conversation. We noticed we had a lot of solo travellers, and you know, everyone knows that it's a trend um, that we're seeing more and more of. People are more adventurous on their own and, and willing to travel on their own. And um, yeah, so um, a friend of mine um, got me sort of introduced to a website called Meetup dot com and what that does is you put in your local area you put in your interests and it connects you with groups with the same interests so if you put in darwin lancashire which is where i'm based there's loads of walking groups and there's a supper club called dinner at maria's um, and now there's holiday companions as well so what i did was i created a group for lancashire and northwest um, and we have meetups across lancashire normally in a pub but at the moment we've been doing it on zoom um, and it's basically um, an opportunity for solo travelers to get together with other solo travelers we have we had a trip planned to Malta. We were supposed to go um, on the 20th of April for a week. There were 12 of us from the Holiday Companion Club. So um, the opportunity for Strawberry is I get to sit there in front of travellers and learn where they want to go next, you know, what they love about travel. I've learned a lot about my clients um, through the, the, the club, but also I love chatting travel. <laughs> so like completely selfishly, I get to go to the pub for a couple of hours and chat to other people that love travel as much as I do. So yeah, it's, it, it grew exponentially and um, it's going to be a big part of our strategy going forward um, as we develop those trips and we recruit more clubs around the country, hopefully. And what's the reaction been from the members? They don't, they're around the situation. No, just around um, going on holidays and being... Oh, they, they love it because, you know, they live on their own or they travel on their own. And, you know, a lot of them were fed up with that situation. That, so they really love getting together with other people and, and um, you know, like-minded people, you know, very often. And um, the other thing they love as well is, you know, having that connection with a travel agent that knows a bit more about single supplements and where the deals are and things like that. They're really appreciative of help I can give them there. And if and I'm very honest with them, if they can get it cheaper direct, then, you know, I, I post I post them in that direction as well. Um, you know, it's a very transparent um sort of relationship if you will um between us but um yeah they, they just they just love having the company of other travelers and you know an opportunity to travel with other people and then that knowledge as well yeah what a great idea to bring people together like that I really like yeah, it yeah the zoom calls are going brilliantly actually it's actually bringing more people together because the in-person um you know it it depends on if that's near to you or you know or it's within a distance you're willing to travel whereas with the zoom you know it doesn't matter where they are in the northwest they can join the zoom so that they've been going really well and um what challenges have you faced during covid19 and how have you adapted and overcome them well, um, you know, aside from cancellations, I've been very fortunate with my client book. They've been incredibly patient and a lot of them have looked to rebook. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, but around the cancellations, balance payments is a big one this week because um, obviously, you know, balances are due for the first sort of wave of school holiday uh, dates um, sort of in the next few days. So that's been a big challenge. But really, the way I've kind of overcome that is just communication, communication, communication. So so, um, you know, I've, I've got my bookers and I've looked at how they like to be communicated to and I've tried to um, communicate to them. So, for example, I've got a client that only talked to me on WhatsApp. So that's fine. I've been, you know, leaving advice messages and sending them messages and things. Very, very um, in person. So very, very personal communication. Um, cash flow. That's a big challenge for us um, and a lot of that has been around mindset and just, you know, being able to see the opportunities that from the government or, um, you know, speak to suppliers and kind of reduce costs and um, things like that. Another challenge has been lead, lead generation, <laughs> you know, getting those inquiries, which is where the sort of in after um, in the after appointments came from and where you know I offered people um, the opportunity to be a VIP because we we know that there's going to be an increase in you know there's going to be a, quite an influx of inquiries you know whenever the end is yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then marketing tone has been a big one as well like knowing what to say how to say it you know without coming across preachy or too optimistic it's been a very fine balance but I've just taken the approach of being consistent and offering inspiration and that seems to have served me really well. 
And how do you think that coronavirus will change the landscape of travel and people's attitude as they look towards traveling again? I think um, it's going to, you know, as a travel agent, I'm definitely have to think about my strategy, whether I'll be price led or, you know, value driven. And, um, you know, we, we may see huge price wars after this or we may see you know um the opportunity to say look at these bucket list adventures let's see um you know where we can go on the um live i did earlier this week uh, the feedback was that people were looking for adventures and looking for that slightly different holiday i think um you know as an agent i'll be monitoring trends you know the way people spend their money and um, i've certainly changed the way i spend money i'm putting more money into my local businesses so i've got the butchers deliver a pack a week and the veg soldiers and the bakers do and then I get little bits from the supermarket and I think that's going to be quite a shift for people as well so I think people will want to see that their money's doing good so things like you know being an agent for change and along with that sort of sustainability is also the environmental impact as well and I think people will be quite conscious of crowds and um, I think they'll be looking for you know somewhere to maybe escape the crowds a little bit um, then we'll obviously have the staycation versus <laughs> going abroad and that'll be and then how we travel as well i think rail um you know certainly the euro tunnel euro star might see a bit um of a increase as people try and avoid um air travel i don't know it's um it's kind of put you put a finger in the air isn't it <laughs> and see what yeah. kind of happens <laughs> definitely but i think one thing is clear and that is that people are desperate to travel and um i don't definitely. think people off um so yeah let's yeah. hope yeah. that yeah. that's definitely the feedback we've been getting definitely yeah fingers crossed it just happens uh yeah in a relatively short time now <laughs> yeah um, fingers crossed yeah what are you most looking forward to once the ban has been lifted where are you going to travel to um oh that's a really good question i've got a trip planned for belfast in october we've got um a, a client we've, we've organized a conference for and i've tagged on some extra days for me and the family to do that so i'm really looking forward to doing belfast um but as a family we are itching to cruise it's been um I have, i've got an 18 month old so we haven't cruised since i was pregnant and um, so we're, we're, we're desperate to get on the ocean and anyone that knows cruise and loves cruise will know exactly what i mean and um, so we're looking forward to maybe a princess i saw they had some stellar deals at 499 the other day so i think we'll be planning a cruise definitely okay well oh, that's interesting do you think that cruising will be affected going forward yeah, I think I think cruising definitely will be affected. I think um, you know it's going to be one of the biggest changes, along with possibly air travel. Um, and I think um, yeah, I think we'll see maybe fewer new ships coming through as quickly as they were all planned over the next few years as we as, as cruise lines try and you know get back to capacity. But I, I think the new to cruise element will will be most shaken and um, i think people that already cruise love it they know it and you know they come back time and time again but i think new to cruise might sort of flounder a little and you know it'll be up to us as agents to to really help promote that definitely and uh, i'm sure you'll inspire people to cruise as you have such a passion about it as well i hope so well i, I truly believe there's a cruise line for everyone and i invite um you know my social media followers i invite them to test me on that because i really i do believe it's about finding the right cruise line and the right itinerary and you won't look back i, I really do believe do believe that oh great well you certainly convinced me well thanks yeah. for talking to me kate um yeah that's all my questions and yeah i think yeah uh, you you've kind of inspiring people and agents and um yeah hopefully yeah let's travel again soon i guess yes, yes let's do that <laughs> thank you so much thanks take care bye bye you too